Hello everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Today we're going to talk and hopefully learn more about a condition that affects about 800,000 people in the UK alone. Let's watch this. In 2011, professional photographer Mark Seymour embarked upon his most challenging personal portrait project to date as he began to document the life of his own father, Ronnie, diagnosed as living with dementia. When was that taken? Did he take that? Yeah. He would have developed it here as a start over. He the developed time. it? Yeah. Um, this picture was taken of Dad uh, about three years ago. And uh, although we were aware his memory uh, was failing, uh, we simply put it down to old age at that point, and uh, you know, we all tend to forget things. It's when Mum started saying that uh, Dad's falling asleep at the table, and uh, the first thing I did was I purchased a, um, an Urkel chair to match their dining room suite with arms, so that if Dad did fall asleep, he wouldn't fall off because he was falling off the other chairs and, and starting to bang his head, etc. So th this is uh, Dad's workbench and uh, this is a really unusual state that it's in. Uh, normally it's very, very tidy. Uh, Dad's almost uh, OCD with his tidiness and the way everything has to be in a particular place. Mm. And it's an absolute Aladdin's cave of uh, goodies, I guess, if you're an engineer. Do you remember how he proposed? Yes. Go on then. Oh dear. Um, Where were you? Um, outside a pub. No, we were around the back of a pub. <laughs> we were around the back of a pub. We've been in the pub. Did he get down on one bended knee? No, 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 no. At all. It wasn't like that. No. I find it really difficult processing the images. Um, it's something that I'm really proud of, the body of work. I think it's something that hopefully will, you know, others will be able to see this piece of work and it will show them what dementia is really like. And, you know, it is a hard hitting um, illness and it's quite hard for families to, to cope with. And it's showing it in its real light and I'm privileged to be able to do that as a documentary photographer. You know, we knew Dad had to go into a home. Mum was very reluctant to, to let go because she'd said those words for better, for worse, and she wanted to look after Dad, but Mum wouldn't open up and, and didn't want to tell us what was happening to her at home and what Dad was saying to her. But anyway, it came the day, and um, uh, the day to take him into the home. I just asked, I said, Mum, just, you know, take his hand and, you know, just take him in there and I'm just going to stay back and, and come, come in in a minute. But I just wanted to stay back and capture this shot. And it's, it's almost kind of like, you know, Dad has, has, has dementia and he's, you need to treat him almost like a child and, you know, just, just tell him what to do or lead him and he will go with you because he trusts you. This image, I feel, is quite poignant um, about Dad because he used to love playing the harmonica um, and it was his first point where he went into hospital and um, we felt, you know, Dad, we were always going to lose Dad at this point, but uh, he'd lost a lot of blood and they couldn't, they didn't understand why. And he went into hospital, he was in hospital for about six weeks. Um, and we went in to see him every day and I used to take my camera in every day to document more of his life but I took in his his mouth organ and uh, the reason I love the picture so much is it's it kind of sums up dementia you know he's got this instrument that he knew very well and could play very well in his past but he's kind of thinking about it and the, the gesture of his hand on his eyebrow suggests and tells you that you know, I've got this and I should know how to play it, but I'm really sort of struggling with it and give me, give me a few moments and I'll, I'll get it together with it. My one worry is mum. And she still has that belief that one day the spark is gonna come back. Because quite often we come away from the home and she says, our dad was really good today and yet 
in my eyes, he was no different. But he may have just said one word. He may have just said Winnie. And that gives a flicker of hope to Mum. And you can see she's clinging on to that. If he had another illness, people would be saying, oh, how, how's Ronnie, how's, what's happening, so-and-so, so-and-so. But you get nothing. You get, you get nothing at all. When you go to visit him, how, how do you feel now? I want to bring you home. So this week is Dementia Awareness Week from the 19th until the 24th of May. So now I'm actually joined in the studios by Mark Seymour. Hello, Mark. Hello. So very moving documentary so far. Yes. We're going to watch some more of it Thank you. afterwards. Thank you. So how, tell us about your dad, like before um, he got um, dementia. What was he like? He was, um, he was a lovely guy. You know, he, they lived pretty much for each other, mum and dad did. Um, he... Uh, really never moved far his whole life. Um, he was in fact born at number 13 Meadway mm -hmm. and then when they got married he moved to number 3 Meadway <laughs> so and uh, he stayed there his whole life mm -hmm. um, and in fact literally about six weeks ago I changed the electricity in there to, to square pin plugs so oh, they still had the seriously? old round pin plugs in the house from the 50s oh. so the house is kind of a relic to the, to the 50s almost, mm -hmm. you know, everything in there from the furniture um, so yeah, uh, Dad was a very hands-on man. He would, uh, he was a very proud man. He made everything in the house. He mm -hmm. made a lot of the furniture in the house. Um, Sounds like my granddad. So. Yeah, <laughs> and it was quite funny because um, I didn't realise the importance of some of the things in the house until uh, Neil James, who who kindly did the the, the documentary for us, mm -hmm. uh, and he asked Mum, said, "What's what's the favourite? What's your favourite room in the house?" and and she replied, the bedroom. And I thought, no, mum, don't go there. <laughs> and uh, I'm being blessed her. She's, you know, late 70s. Yeah. And uh, Neil said, uh, and, and why is that? Would you, would you like to tell me? And she just said, because Ronnie's made all of that furniture in there with his own hands. Mm. So she goes, when I'm sitting at the dressing table, she goes, it's part of him. Yeah, I can understand that. So what was their relationship like? Um, what do you remember? Their relationship, I mean, they were very close, um, and I never saw them, you know, be intimate throughout my, my whole life. Mm -hmm. And yet when Dad went into the home, suddenly this was taken away from them, this very private thing that they did together. Mm -hmm. And suddenly they were like almost two teenagers. They were cuddling and So you could see and, all now. <laughs> and they were telling each other how much they loved oh, each other yeah. with all these other people around in this home. And it was mm -hmm. really, really nice to see. And... I actually learned a lot about their relationship after my dad went in the home. Um, in fact, you know, quite before. quite a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, from you know how they uh, how he proposed to her, you know, from how romantic or what he used to do, little things he used to do for her, and mm -hmm. all those sorts of things. But I was totally unaware of them because, you know, he was there f for us as a family. Mm -hmm. Now, when did you actually notice that something was wasn't? Um, quite the same with your father. Yeah, we noticed about uh, four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Dad started uh, falling asleep more, uh, becoming more and more forgetful, um, just saying little things. There, there was little, bit, little bits of distrust coming in. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all typical signs of uh, Alzheimer's. Did you know that at the time, or did you just think, oh, it's just the age, so it's, it's we, normal? Yeah, we, we kind of knew it because... Uh, there is a history in the family, uh, you know, his mother had uh, dementia mm -hmm. um, and his sister uh, had dementia. So uh, dad always thought, you know, I won't get it because you know, he's, he was physically very, very fit. And okay. although he never owned a car, he cycled everywhere, he, he ran, he did, he did exercise. So independent in his, as well. Oh, totally, mm -hmm. yes. So Mark, what was it like when you made that decision with your mum that dad should go to a home? It was really difficult for mum. Um, it was not so difficult for, for myself and my brother because mm. we could see that he needed to go there and mum was finding it more and more difficult. But she wanted to, to keep him at home as long as she could. I and uh, it was rather fortunate we had a family wedding coming up so it was a good excuse to get dad into the home for some respite. Mm -hmm. And um, once he went in there, um, it was quite, quite a tearful day because... Um, when we got back home, uh, Mum said to me, this is the first night I'm ever going to spend by myself. Oh, because yeah. growing up, she'd spent 
they'd lived with a family of eight, so she'd mm. never had her own bedroom. And then the day she got married, she, she obviously was with her husband. Yeah. And uh, this was the first night, so we took her back to our house and you know, there was lots of tears, but uh, yeah. it was the right thing to do because your dad became more and more difficult and needed was too much pretty much 24-7 um, you know, care towards uh, the mid and the end of his life. Mm -hmm. So we are going to watch some more of the, the second part okay, of the perfect. documentary right after this break. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to today's program where we are speaking all about dementia. So I was speaking to Mark Seymour before the break and we saw the first part of a very moving documentary. Let's watch the second part. A lot of people have questioned me photographing my father and said that I find it very difficult to do uh, because of the way the illness will pan out. But quite honestly, I wouldn't have done anything else. We used to look for places to, to take them that would uh, um, sort of invoke memories of his from the past because the, the memory uh, of a dementia patient knows more about the past than of the present. and. Uh, it was quite important to go here for, for mum as well as dad because this, this is one of the places that they used to date. Oh yeah, they all had motorbikes. I think I think Roger had a Norton. Ned's run his motorbike down there. And um, this was taking at Ace Cafe. Um, certainly mum is grieving every day. Um, every time she sees him, she comes away and um, she's in floods of tears because She's lost her soulmate. My mother um, and my father have always seen me with a camera, and it's second nature for, for them to see that camera in my hands. I think if I just sat there, I kind of would have found it probably more difficult, but by having a camera, um, I have a purpose, I have a goal, I have a, something that I can try and achieve. Um, for both my father and for dementia. Over the last few weeks, things have deteriorated um, progressively quite fast. And dad is now virtually bedridden. Um, his muscles have virtually wasted away. He's unable to walk. He's totally incontinent. He needs 24-7 supervision, but you can still see that wonderful connection in the hands between mum and dad. And if you look in mum's hand, there's a small piece of sandwich, which dad wants, but he can't work out how to get it into his mouth. It's becoming more and more difficult to photograph dad. I'm fast coming to the conclusion that I may be close to the completion of the story. Ronnie, where is he? Where is Ronnie? Where's Ronnie? Okay, it's quite emotional. Just get to go. All right, so Mark, thank you so much for for sharing all of this with us and with the viewers because you do want to obviously mm. raise awareness about this and since we are in you know dementia awareness week as well now we do have our resident um, expert here dr rob hicks hi rob how are you i'm very well i'm um you know i, I think it's a remarkable piece of uh, work project that mm. you've produced and i I, you. I congratulate you on it it takes a lot of guts to do it thank you um, and i think it, it will actually help a lot of people it will definitely to, to learn about dementia mm. but also to in, in essence, be prepared for the for the process mm. of this horrible condition, this cruel mm. condition. So well done. Thank you. 
Okay, now let's get some, some of your expert advice on this because we are going to speak about your, your father more, Mark, in just a moment. But what actually causes dementia in the first place? Well, well dementia is, is in essence is a, is a collection of symptoms. So everybody, most people know about the memory problems, but mm -hmm. dementia occurs when the, the person loses their mental ability in association with the, the, the death of brain cells. Mm -hmm. So memory loss is one problem, judgment is another problem. Um, changing emotions can be another symptom. Um, personality changes, um, loss of independence is, is, and people just don't know what to do or mm -hmm. how to do things. They just lose all these previously acquired skills. Mm -hmm. So obviously the commonest cause of dementia is Alzheimer's disease, but there are other types of disease that cause dementia as well. So there's vascular dementia, which mm -hmm. occurs when the brain is attacked by lots of mini strokes and strokes and it damages okay. the brain cells that way. Um, and there are other forms of dementia, uh, you know, causes of dementia as well. But the, and the pattern of this disease is, is slightly different according mm -hmm. to whichever disease it is. So with Alzheimer's, you often get, you usually get a gradual decline in mm -hmm. the person's mental capacity. Um, with vascular dementia, you often get what we call a stepwise decline. So after a little stroke, their, their mental cap capacity will get less and mm -hmm. then they'll go, they might plateau for a little while and they get less again. So, okay. so it, it's, in essence, there are different diseases that cause the dementia mm -hmm. problem. And I think there are two, there are two major issues with, with, with dementia. One is actually recognising that dementia is the problem Mm -hmm. And that's a challenge, not just for family, but also for doctors like myself as well. And I think that, that often the, the unspoken challenge is, is around carers. Mm -hmm. So for your mum, for example, because we, we are in a society where the older generation are very much the stiff, upper lip yeah. society. I, don't, I can manage. Mm -hmm. um, it would, I will feel ashamed, they think, if I was to ask for help. Or if somebody That's thought that I, that I couldn't be looking after my loved one. You made mm -hmm. a very poignant comment about, you know, in the wedding vows, say, saying that, you know, in sickness and in health. And then, but there are decisions that have to be made um, mm -hmm. where you have to think of not the interest, not just of the person with dementia, but also the person who's looking after mm -hmm. that person. Because what we don't want is the carer to get sick yeah. Yeah. In, in the process. And time and time again, sadly, we see that happening. Mm -hmm. Now, just going back to what you said about the memory, because I found it quite interesting because your, your father was still able to play the harmonica. Yes. But he still remembered how to play that. Yes. That, is that quite, quite a common thing? No, that there's the certain pockets of memory the, that The problem is in. very much with short-term memory is, 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 is one of the prima primary symptoms. Mm -hmm. So a person may not remember whether they've had, you know, they're in the middle of the afternoon, they won't remember if they've had breakfast. But okay. they can remember something that happened 30 years ago. So they may, you know, remember you showed the, the, the cafe, the motorbike cafe. Mm -hmm. they, they may remember having, you know, tried out a bike there and had a, a, a meeting there mm -hmm. with somebody. Um, and that's something that which is, is, is very difficult to come to terms with for, for the individual. And yeah. often what they'll do is they'll make up, you know, stories or they'll, 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 they'll sort of dismiss the fact that they can't remember something. Um, right. And mm -hmm. you know, because they, they they don't remember it, but they are aware, so, you know, that there's something not not quite right. Mm -hmm. they'll, so they'll brush it off, or they'll they'll shift a conversation mm -hmm. else elsewhere, um, and that can be very difficult to actually then break in to that mindset mm -hmm. and and try and determine what's 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 going on. Okay. I think it's very important to remember that there are there are other treatable medical conditions that can cause memory problems. So an underactive thyroid is, is one, for example. A vitamin B12 deficiency can cause um, memory problems. So whenever we see somebody who might have memory problems, we'll always do some screening tests and blood tests to try and identify whether actually there is a treatable cause of mm -hmm. their memory problem, rather than you know, immediately jump into the conclusion that this is one of the diseases that causes dementia. Now, Mark, you actually mentioned that it ran, ran in your family. So is, is, it, is that something quite common in that it, it, it can, hereditary? It can, it can. People inherit genes that, predis that make their risk of developing certain forms of dementia more likely. So mm -hmm. Alzheimer's, for example. So if you've got somebody in the family who's got Alzheimer's, you, you, are, you are at greater risk of developing it yourself, but you are mm -hmm. not guaranteed to develop it. So 
the, the greatest risk factor for all forms of dementia, well, for Alzheimer's and certainly vascular dementia, is, is getting older. Okay. The risk factors for vascular dementia are the same um, risk factors that cause heart disease and strokes. So it's high cholesterol, it's high blood pressure, it's being overweight, it's not, it's not enough activity and it's smoking. So there are those sort of things that people can address mm. to try and reduce their risk of, of, of certain you know, types of, mm. of dementia causing disease. But um, it, it is, you know, like with all things in life, there's an awful lot of research going on trying to pinpoint what the exact causes are. But in yeah. the meantime, what's important is to live a healthy lifestyle, give mm -hmm. your best chance of avoiding many of these Most conditions things, in the first yeah. place. And actually then, hopefully, with Dementia Awareness Week, people will become more tuned in yeah. to spotting the signs mm -hmm. in their loved ones and hopefully encouraging them, them to get some to advice. To get help and yeah. advice as well. Now, Mark, you're actually involved in, in an event, aren't you, as well? around this? Yes, um, one of the things we're, we're trying to do uh, with the Alzheimer's Society um, is uh, raise some funds on Kickstarter to have an mm. exhibition uh, in September which is World Alzheimer's uh, okay. Month um, and uh, the plan is to, sh to show these images um, so we can raise even more awareness yeah. and Great. hopefully raise uh, lots of money for, for the charity as well. Right, so Rob, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your advice with us again. My pleasure, and, thank and you. And thank you so much, Mark, for coming and sharing such a private, intimate part of your That's life my with us. thank you. And all the best to your mum as well. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Alrighty, so we also like to um, thank Neil James for allowing us to feature your documentary. It's great to watch it. Now, if you've had a similar experience or have one of your own and want to share your story, get in touch by filling in the form on the Chrissy B Show website, chrissybshow.tv, or let us know your thoughts and advice on the subject by tweeting us at Chrissy B Show or commenting on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. We'll be right back. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Hello everyone, if you've just joined us today, we're talking about the condition of dementia. So we've learned what it's like going through it from a family member's point of view, what dementia actually is from our medical expert, and now we're going to find out what help is available out there for those people with dementia and for carers. But first, let's take a look at this video. Everybody liked Jeff. He really was a nice man, a gentleman, and gentle in the proper word. Yeah, lovely. I first knew that something was wrong when we were working for the camping and caravanning club and he started to leave things around in the field, tools. But I just thought, oh, if this memory loss is coming on him, if we catch it in time, medication, he'll get better. Of course, I didn't realise that what he'd got was a disease that um, you don't get better from. It just continues. For Helen, she said she didn't hear the words dementia as such, she just kind of thought, oh well, you know, we get on with it, and, and they did for a long time continue to get on with it. The Admiral Nurse team supported Helen in actually finding an appropriate placement for Jeff. We've got the thrush and the magpie. The biggest blow on that, I think, to me was the letting go, the res letting go of the responsibility for him, really. Oh, oh hi, hi, Helen, how are you? Nice Fine. to see you. Admiral Nurse comes along at just the right time for me and gives me the confidence and the knowledge that I am still in control. And with their help, I have gained confidence to be able to say, this is what Jeff and I need. What? Oh, that's nice, you're holding me. Oh, that's lovely. We've built up a very, very close relationship um, and a really good therapeutic relationship, which has enabled us to talk about those very, very difficult subjects.
Helen has a fabulous understanding of, of the illness now and partly through the work of Admiral Nurses but partly through the carers groups that she attends as well that we've encouraged her to attend and that's what I think that Jeff's life is now fully enriched and that it's as good as it can be. And look what I brought you. And she gets me over those desperate times. Aren't they lovely? Without her. I just would not be able to function. I really wouldn't. So now I'd like to welcome Dave Bell, an Admiral Nurse from Dementia UK. Hello, Dave. Hello. How are nice you? Nice to meet you, Chrissy. I'm fine, thanks. It's lovely to have you on to talk about this as well. Okay. So obviously we heard Mark's story earlier. Yeah, no, very, very moving very story. Moving, wasn't it? Very, very moving um, images as well that mm -hmm. I think will really affect other people who have watched it. Yeah, definitely. Now you've been an Admiral Nurse for how long? Oh, goodness it's me. I've, I've, I've been an Admiral Nurse since about 1998, what's that, 17 years, uh -huh. something like that. But okay. I've been a mental health nurse for a lot longer than that. So. Okay. Um, I just want to find out, what, what is it like for you being, being a nurse and, and helping people and helping families like this? I mean, it's a lot of, I mean, for, for myself, it's, it's, it can be very satisfying, but it's, there's an awful lot of, of stress and distress involved mm -hmm. in the work we do. Um, if you get good support, then you, it helps you through. I think yeah. a lot of nurses actually find it very hard to mm -hmm. work with people who have dementia. Because there's, so, there's so few of you, isn't there, as well, to well, help? For, for Admiral Nurses, I mean, um, the, the, the um, film just now said there were 85. We are a fast-growing charity, oh, and great. there are now something like just under 140 across the country, right, okay. but there's still very few compared yeah. to, compared know, to the, what, needs. What the need that's available, that's there for them, yeah. Okay. Can you tell us a bit more about Dementia UK and what actually well, support is Well, Dementia UK is a charity that supports Admiral Nurses and mm. helps us to, to develop, if you like. Um, Dementia UK tries to influence other commissioners, so mm. um, uh, trusts or, or other charities, to yeah. provide the Admiral Nurse, to provide the funding for Admiral Nurses um, in the areas where, where we're working in the community. From Dementia UK itself, the, what, what they provide is a helpline um, mm. that's based at the charity, and we're staffed by experienced nurses, like my, I'm, I'm on the helpline myself. Okay. Um, and we try and provide advice and support and information for callers by telephone or email. Mm. Um, but the charity itself is, is committed to developing support for families and carers of, yeah. of uh, people with dementia and those affected by dementia mm -hmm. by providing Admiral Nurses, really. That's the, yeah. that's okay. the main aim. And if someone, you know, does does want some help from an Admiral Nurse, how do they go about getting if, help? If there's one in their area, I mean, they can find out from our website and mm -hmm. from the charity whether there's an Admiral Nurse available in their area. We work in very different ways as well. I mean, some are based in, for example, in, in care homes. Mm -hmm. Some are based with other charities. Some are based in acute hospitals. Um, mm -hmm. Others are based with mental health trusts or work in, with memory services where the, the uh, Dr. Rob who was talking before was talking about diagnosis mm -hmm. and that's where the diagnosis actually takes place generally right. um, so um, so there, there, there are a number of, ad, of ways of, of Admiral Nurses working but if they if people want to contact Dementia UK and find out from us mm. um, either from our website or by calling the charity then they're very welcome to and we can actually explain whether okay. there's one in their area. Okay. Um, can you just give us a bit more detail about what a nurse will actually do when yeah, you arrive um, at the house? What, what, what's the process? In, in, well, in the community, I mean, I think from the film you saw, Rachel, mm. um, uh, arriving and supporting someone at home, yeah. in coping, in understanding what's going on um, around dementia, I think one of the big things is that people don't know what happens. They, they, mm. they don't quite understand the issues about memory, concentration, um, uh, attention, those issues. And because of the sporadic nature of memory as well, yeah. um, people often want, worry that the husband's putting it on or something like that. They're worried as well about the oh. stigma attached to it. Mm. So if, what the Admiral Nurse can do is build a relationship with the person and help them under, make, you know, develop that understanding, but also maybe build a bridge to accepting support in the home, which is a this huge is, issue for This some is the people. thing I was going to say, because as we saw in the video, it's like, I don't know if people have this idea, especially when it's a, a married couple and they've been together for yeah. years, it's like, well, I should be able to look after my spouse, yeah. that, I, yeah. you know, they need me. I can't sort of give that, what if, you know, if they feel guilty even for asking for help because well, they think they should we, be able to cope. On the helpline, we've got some, something like 
um, over well, 55, 56 percent of the calls come mm. from daughters, uh, another 15 percent come from sons of the right. person with dementia, mostly trying to find out how they can support yeah. their parents to accept oh, help. Gosh. So that's and a huge no, there's issue. There's no shame in it because you know every, everyone needs that, that extra hand when you're going through something like that. I remember my mum; she would not leave my dad's bedside. All throughout when he, yeah. when he was ill, she yeah. just she, I don't know if she was scared something would happen when she'd just leave the room for like five minutes or something, but yeah. she she yeah. wanted to be there the whole time and would say, Mum, take a break, it's okay, you know, we're here as well. Yeah. But it's like she didn't want to let go, it was like she and, and accepting strangers into your p very private environment yeah. as well because people have been very private. Um, it takes a, a, a certain amount of openness and it takes some, some help in allowing that to happen yeah. as well. Once it has happened, once you've opened the doors to that, sometimes the support is brilliant. Yeah. Um, we, we hear, unfortunately, we hear horror stories about, about home care services mm -hmm. and, and residential nursing homes. Um, we don't hear about the good ones and there are lots yeah. and lots of good, of good practice going, out, going yeah. on out there. Well, you do have to be a certain kind of person, I suppose, to be an admiral nurse because, I mean, it's judging from, from the little I know of you, but I can see sort of the kindness and the, the type of person wow. that you are and obviously from the video as well. So, I mean, what's wrong with allowing someone like that into your home and just it, giving it, you a I think help? it is, it's about relation. It's about how you, how you build that relationship yeah. and mm. with patients and doing it gradually. I mean, I think some of the ways that, um, that we help people um, is by giving them advice and, and support. Um, one brilliant thing in, in the, uh, the film earlier on was about the, 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 the photographs and yeah. the, the memories. Mm. And if you can build something that care staff, either in a residential home or, or care staff coming into your house, can actually understand some okay. of the person's individual yeah. needs. Because mm -hmm. it's all about individuals. There is a disease process, but it's how it happens is yeah. related to the individual person. And if you can help the care staff going in to find little tips, little connection points yes. with, with the person that they're trying to build a relationship yeah. with, you're going to make a huge difference in, in helping them feel trust That's in the good, person yeah. who's coming in. It's a very yeah. scary illness, you know. People lose their sense of confidence, their sense mm -hmm. of, of, um, of trust of the world around them and often become very isolated. Mm -hmm. I think if, that's our big problem is that why we're mental health nurses is because a huge issue um, for caring for someone with dementia is that of high levels of stress, 24 hours a day, seven mm -hmm. days a week. The stresses that build up, the difficulties with coping with it can often lead to depression. And we, yeah. the research has shown that something like 40% of family carers, um, especially wives and husbands, do end up with depression. And Which is it why it's so, missed. so important to get the um, help when, when, when yeah, it's exactly. safely available. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dave, for coming on and talking okay. about that. And we are going to give some details now for, for yeah, people at do. home as yeah. well. Thank you so much. Okay, so for families that are living with dementia and feel they would benefit from the advice of an experienced Admiral Nurse, please contact the Admiral Nursing Direct Helpline on 0845 257 9406 or you can also email direct at dementiauk.org so just to let you know the helpline zone from monday to friday 9 15 a.m to 4 45 p.m and on wednesday and thursday evenings 6 p.m till 9 p.m so dementia uk are striving to increase the number of admiral nurses by 50 percent over the next two years to support the growing number of families affected by dementia so you can get those details on our screen now and also on our website chrissybshow.tv so after the break, we'll be checking out the food that's good for memory and I'll be sharing my own wisdom on how family members can help their loved ones suffering from dementia. We'll be right back. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Dimension Day here on the Chrissy B Show. So I've learned a lot today and I think one of the most important things to remember is about the carers. So it's very important that you do ask for help because, you know, there's no shame in allowing other people into your life that really do want to make a difference as well. But here are a few of my tips that will hopefully help you too. So the first point is to treat the person with respect and dignity. 
So um, people sometimes when, a, when someone is ill, people tend to focus on the illness rather than the individual. So don't focus on the dementia, but do focus on the actual person. And remember that someone with dementia is still a unique, is still a, a valuable human being, just like everyone else. So make sure you always treat them with respect. And remember, they are very vulnerable. So it's very important that you make them feel confident and valued. So show them how important they are to you. Number two is to be a good listener. So when someone has dementia, you know, someone supporting a loved one with dementia, it can really, really help them to talk things through. So make sure you take the time to listen, even if it's just a quick phone call, maybe you're not actually living in the same home as the person with dementia, but maybe, you know, you're a relative. So just a quick call if you can, and try not to take over the conversation and not to judge or maybe give them advice. Sometimes, for example, I, I talk to my friends, sometimes I want advice, but there are other times when I just want to vent and just someone to listen to me. So do the same thing with this person. Be patient and be supportive. And, you know, that, that would really help them just have that listening ear. Number three is to be a good communicator. So people with dementia, they can become quite confused at times, as we saw, you know, with the examples earlier. So make sure you communicate very clearly. So speak calmly and wait for signs that the person has actually understood what you've had to say. And also don't forget the other types of communication, the non-verbal ones, such as your, your body language. And, you know, make sure that you look at the person in the eye and preferably at eye level as well. And use physical contact, such as a little pat on the back or something like that, just to give that person some reassurance, especially when they're feeling a bit vulnerable. And also be careful of the kind of tone of voice you use. So if you do become agitated, that will also, um, they'll be able to pick up on that. So make sure your tone is very calm and very warm. Number four is don't feel overwhelmed. So it may seem sometimes like a really daunting task to support someone with dementia. And, you know, maybe you have these concerns, these worries about making a commitment that you can't actually keep or maybe you're afraid of facing something that you don't you won't know how to handle but don't let that, that allow you to actually lose contact with the person completely because even just small things can make a very big difference so for example you can still show them that you care by just popping around for a cup of tea or maybe helping them with something at, at you know at home any small thing like this really really does help so the next point is to offer practical help so two-thirds of people with dementia do actually live at home but even those who are independent they might be really grateful for a little bit of help with some tasks and this would also help the carers very much. So how about doing something that needs to be done like the cooking or maybe running an errand, but at the same time don't go in there guns blazing, trying to take over everything. Make sure there's that balance because you need to think of, you know, still keeping that respect for the person. And also think about the carers themselves. Maybe they would really appreciate a helping hand and maybe you could fill in for them, you know, from time to time to give them a break as well because they do need to get some rest and to get some recovery for themselves. Number six is to organize a fun day. So who doesn't like to look forward to a special treat now and again? So it's good to take a break from everyday routine. So if you're planning a treat for someone with dementia, think about what they like to do before the illness and whether you need to adapt an activity to their current um, situation. So it might be something simple like maybe going for a picnic in the park or going to a favorite restaurant, something like that. I'm sure they're gonna love it. Number seven, is to find out more about dementia. So the more you know about it, the more comfortable you feel in spending time with the person with dementia or their loved ones. So dementia can make people behave differently, but once you understand that these changes are part of the illness, you'll find it much easier to be able to understand them and feel more comfortable. And number eight, do direct people to the Alzheimer's Society. So don't forget to consult the experts because they are there to help them. So the Alzheimer's Society, for example, they run lots of different types of services that can help a family living with dementia. They have things like helplines, support groups, they have befriending services, even socials and outings, which we just spoke about. So if you do know someone affected by dementia, ask them if they've contacted them at the Alzheimer's Society. And if they haven't, maybe you could go the extra mile and get the contact details for them. Um, this society actually helps 30,000 people each year in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. So they're very well equipped to make a big difference in someone's life. Right, so before we go tonight, we want to end the show with something fun and end on a high. And I know it's been quite emotional today. So what better way to end than with some good food for the memory and some sunshine to help fight dementia. Did you know that there are ways to reduce the risk of getting Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementia? 
If you didn't, don't worry, that's what we're here for. Researchers across the world have discovered that it may be possible to prevent or delay the symptoms of dementia by eating right, exercising, staying mentally and socially active, and keeping stress in check. According to a study by Dr. Martha Morris and colleagues of Chicago's Rush Institute for Healthy Aging, eating fish like cold water fish, such as salmon, tuna, herring and mackerel once a week reduces your risk of developing Alzheimer's by 60%. Mackerel is one of the highly recommended oily fishes for a healthy diet. It is also known as mackerello. The slim torpedo shaped fish is found in deep temperature and tropical waters. It is rich in essential oils, vitamins and minerals. Omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids occur in high quantities in this fish. New research suggests that adults with low levels of vitamin D may have a higher risk of developing this condition or other cognitive problems. Exposing your sunscreen-free face, back, arms or legs to no more than 10 to 15 minutes of sunshine a few times a week could boost vitamin D levels. This means start making your summer plans, such as outdoor activities, with your family and friends. This will give you that vitamin D boost you need keep you mentally and socially active, and it is stress-free. Awesome news for all of us, just before the summer season kicks off. Well, that's all we have time for today, but if you have a story to tell us, an experience to help educate, inspire, and motivate others, do get in touch. And to celebrate Father's Day next month, we'll be giving away a special prize to one of you at home and give you the chance to treat your dad. So we'll be announcing the prize soon, but for now, all you need to do for a chance to win is let us know why your dad is the best dad in the world and why he deserves a treat. So you can let us know on a video or however you see best. So you can tweet us on at Chrissy B Show using the hashtag Father's Day on Chrissy B Show. You can comment on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show, or fill in the form on the Chrissy B Show website, which is on your screen right now. And if you put the subject headline, Father's Day Special. Also, let us know if you're taking part in Dementia Awareness Week from the 19th until the 24th of May by tweeting us on at Chrissy B Show or commenting on our Facebook page again, The Chrissy B Show. And also, don't forget, you can visit my personal website for more news about me and how I overcame depression. The website address is mylifeafterdepression.com. I really hope you enjoyed the show and learned something today as I have. Until next time, bye-bye for now.